out. It was so much fun. We're bringing the pie charts back. They've been adjusted. It's Greg Amsinger with the guy who was just confused a couple days ago by those numbers, <laughs> John hey, Heyman. Your numbers were better than I thought. Okay, Not thank that you. Bad. Uh, Not thank that you, bad. Mark Feinstein. We got Steve Phillips here now. Yeah. Are you hey, ready to play Bob Nightingale today? Uh, <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> we appreciate you filling this void for us. Yeah. Okay, so I, I've updated the pie chart. Okay. For Shohei Otani. Now we're going to chew on this. I want all of you to weigh in if I'm on to something here. 60% for the Toronto Blue Jays. This is according to baseball expert Greg Amsinger. 30% for the Dodgers. 1% for the Giants. 1% for the Cubs. 2% for the Angels. 3% for the Mariners because it's looking likely that Soto's going to go to the Yankees. So this will be something they ponder over since Otani hasn't signed yet. 3% for the Atlanta Braves. These are the current numbers, the likelihood, according to my pie chart of where Otani is landing. Not bad. I think you're doing okay. I, I really do. Uh, you know, I still think the Dodgers are more likely than the Jays. Those are the two favorites. Um, you know, I like the fact you got a lot of mystery teams there. You can't count them out. I like the fact Seattle's one of them. I don't think Atlanta's in it. Um, yeah, you got the right two teams, I think, that are favorites. But well, I, will would, you admit- I, would, I would balance it out a little bit more. I, I would go maybe 50, L.A., 40. Toronto. So you still have LA as the, the, I, the front I, runner. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Will you at least back off the fact that yeah. he's not going to the Angels? You, you, no. you kind of. He came no. at me, and I really haven't adjusted what, the what Angels at all. Two percent. The Angels are two percent. I, I give him a little more. I give him four percent. You give him four percent? Yeah. <laughs> Let's give him four. Mark, it seems like he's cooled off. He likes this pie. What do you think of this pie? I like the ninety percent for those two teams. I would balance it out a little more. I might go forty-five, forty-five. Maybe 50-40, like John said, of the Dodgers. I'm happy you took my advice and took the Yankees off that chart. I did. Obviously, <laughs> you know why? Deal, you obviously, know why I did? You, know, you asked kindly. You asked kindly. <laughs> this is why. This is why this <laughs> right. works. Right. So, <laughs> nothing to do with so. Right? It's because he asked if you're kindly. Gonna, if you're going to do it again, if we're going to update these, Atlanta three percent is is too high. Too high? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I have to say that I would make it a two-team pie, and I would make it 55-45 Toronto. Whoa! I, would. I, I don't think anybody else a player. I, I'm, you know, Tom Verducci has said a number of times, and I agree with him. I think it's, I think it's the Dodgers and it's the Blue Jays. And I give the Blue Jays the edge in this. When you start to think, Otani chose the Angels over the Dodgers when he came in the first time because the brand didn't mean anything to him. It was about building his own brand. If he goes to the Dodgers, he shares his brand with the Dodgers brand. That's not what he wants. If he goes to Toronto, he owns Canada, he owns the United States, he owns Japan. Here's the other thing. They have a chance to win. Uh, they've got a, a young core and, and a chance to win for the long term. They'll be able to maximize the baseball value of sponsorships and advertising and, and broadcasting. And they're the one team whose company, the owner's core business of communications, will build income. They'll be able to market in, in Asia and the communications company is going to make money in addition to the baseball part of it. So they're going to make money on Otani, the baseball player, and within their core business, they'll be able to pay more. The Blue Jays, I think, are the, are the favorite in this. My question for this, we talk about him choosing the Angels over the Dodgers. The Dodgers didn't have a DH at the time. So National League teams were out on Otani the first time around. Now they all have a DH, now they're all in play. He choose the Yankees. Now, didn't want New York, but I, I do. I don't think he's a brand guy. I think if he goes to the Dodgers or if he were to go to the Yankees, I think the brand takes away from well, the Otani brand, I think the, which is international. I think now. the biggest thing we have to question is, and we don't know the answer to this, is he willing to go to the East Coast, specifically the Northeast, going up to Canada? Right. right. They supposedly met in Dunedin, Florida, not Toronto, so clearly he's not a big fan of the cold weather. Uh, we just don't know. We have no idea if he's willing geographically. Yeah. If he wants to stay on the West Coast, then I think the Dodgers are the obvious answer. If he's open to going elsewhere. Well, the explanation was that he had never seen their spring site before he'd been to the Rogers Center. So I, I buy that. I do buy Steve's argument to a degree. He's allegedly about the comfort, though. And he, he does love Newport Beach. He does love Southern California. I'm not going to discount that. I, I will say there are some disadvantages with LA they already sell out basically so they're not going to sell many more tickets they already have a great TV deal so it's not going to impact that so there is a lot of logic to Toronto and I've heard in season he told 
a friend of mine, he did like the idea of Toronto as well as the Dodgers. So I do see those as the favorites. I like that I have someone with me now. Steve, thank I'm you for there. joining yeah. the Otani to <laughs> Toronto right, train. train. What island are we on? Right, hold on. We right. have another pie chart. This one is oh. which day uh -oh. we will see Otani sign. I mean, who knows? What are you talking about? <laughs> we do know, according to baseball expert Greg Amsinger, 40% likelihood yeah. that he signs this weekend, 10% tonight, 10% yeah. New Year's Day, 10% first day of spring training. There's a 30% likelihood that Otani takes a $700 million contract and puts it in his stocking, stuffs his own stocking, and gifts himself on Christmas the biggest contract in baseball history. You've got nothing in there between December yeah. 9th and December 25th. Can I take off Whoa. the field and take December 9th? These are, December according 25th? to my sources, right, well, these are the likelihood of days. I would leave. I would leave this weekend at 40 percent. I would make about a 55 percent between December 10th and December 24th, and leave the rest on Christmas. <laughs> I'm going to say Monday. It's Monday on there. No, <laughs> Monday's not That's part of my field, John. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with I Mark. Think this weekend, I do. You with me on the weekend? I, I do. I, only because. You know, the negotiations are at a point where there's only, it's only going to take so long. You know, there's only so many different conversations. Once you narrow it down to a team, you know, these negotiations, you kind of get a sense as to where you're going to go with it or not going to go with it. And so I don't know that it's that complicated once you narrow it down to the team. It comes down to whether or not you're going to treat them as a two-way player and just give him a contract for a two-way player and trust that he's going to come back healthy or whether there's got to be performance bonuses. Every indication was teams were in as a full-blown two-way player, and that's what they were going to pay him and not have to have him earn the pitching part of it. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a free agent. They're, they're not going to nitpick him and make him do performance bonuses. This is the greatest free agent of all time. They'll give him the money or, and give him performance bonuses. On right, top of that. exactly. And an opt-out and anything else he wants. Right? Uh, uh, but, John's, uh, he, he's just, I think, worn out by all these pie charts. Well, <laughs> but I've got Steve one more. Steve is thinking like a management guy, which he was, he was a very good one, so I get it. Right, and, and you're an insider and a very good one. So it leads me to this last yep. pie chart. Okay. Which insider will break the Otani story? Oh, oh. The no, I, no way. 90% John Heyman, 10% no. all others. I'm going to go with other. <laughs> <laughs> i got to go with the odds. There's, there's hundreds of are you Are you trying not to get me to come back for any more of these insider segments? I mean, you want to make Heyman the favorite. I'm okay with that. You put me in other? And singer. And you, this is, he I'm, met I'm, them the best way possible. I'm, I'm hurt. hurt. <laughs> I'm hurt. I don't blame you. That's, that is Did hurtful. you like that pie? It was a I, good pie. I liked it. No, I feel a lot of pressure. I'm feeling pressure right now. And I've got to hit the phones. I've got to run to his room if he's got one. Well, hold on. There, there is a source telling me that the unnamed dog that sat next to Shohei Otani at the MVP reveal unnamed show, dog. he wouldn't allow us to ask what the dog's name was. Well, according to my sources, the dog's name might be connected to which team he picks. So our audience is trying to guess the name of the dog, which could lead to the team. We've got a bunch of Sir Shea. Oh, maybe it's... Come here, Sir Shea. Does that even work? Sir Shea, you're a good boy. I don't know. <laughs> Astro. Well, I mean, that's the Jetsons, of that's course. That's pretty clever. Uh, that's that's a, good, but, but already I, taken. I don't think Houston's in the mix. No, they're not. It's definitely Wrigley. Wrigley. <laughs> Jed Hoyer? Is that Jed Hoyer <laughs> Duncan? Oh, man, can he <laughs> set a seven-foot rim or what? <laughs> Wow, that was shocking. Uh, why would he name his dog, quote, I want to play in Arlington for the World Series champion Texas Rangers? That's kind of weird. Yeah, that's a little long. Uh, the Rangers haven't been mentioned. Well, no. Dewey is taken for my uh, late mom's favorite Red Sox player. He is, however, available for playdates with Shohei's pop. Oh, nice. Cute. Ah, uh, it's wonderful. So maybe by the end of this show, we will find the name of Shohei's dog. This is a whole different way to break the story of the century, John. I like it. You're, you're doing some good work. You're really doing some good work here. Yeah. No, so someone said that. But you at 50%. I'm trying. I got great sources. One of my sources said it, it, the dog's nickname might be Heyman. That could be. Yeah, you never know. You just never know.